Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 Simpilot. Today we're going for another VFR flight as we take the Just Flight Piper Arrow 3 for a cruise up to the new Pilot Plus Oxford to take a look at that new scenery. Let's get started. So here's the setup for today's flight. We're starting in Blackbush where we left off uh, using the, the scenery Just Flight recently released. What we're going to do is head up to Oxford, Kidlington, Echo Golf, Tango Kilo. So I can just write that in here and it will load up a, uh, a direct line, of course. Then it's done VFR direct. We could do VOR to VOR, another typical VFR flying tactic. Problem is we need to know the airspace. The big thing for us today is we're not using air traffic control. We're going to be visually flying. So we have to stay clear of controlled airspace uh, unless we get spe special permission to go through it. So to do that, um, what you can do is you can open the filters and this, it only gives you a little bit of information. In reality, you will need a VFR chart or something. But just to show you roughly what goes on, I can turn airspace is on, nav aids on, uh, and I think that would do for us today. There we go. So let's close that. So we can see Blackbush. This is their air traffic control zone. There's farmers. Um, these square areas are controlled areas that are above us. They don't run down to the ground. So what I'm actually going to do is, as you'll see, it's going to take us straight through this area. This is a military uh, air traffic zone, um, otherwise known as a MATS. So I don't want to go straight through that. So I'm actually going to hopefully go via Compton. So if I was to add Compton, there we go. Now you are allowed to go around the edge of these military air traffic zones, these sort of larger um, slightly strangely shaped areas without permission but it's still recommended you talk to them so uh, I'm going to contact this uh, zone before I transfer through it and then we've got a few other bits of airspace we're going around and you can see we get very close to Bryce Norton's control area so I'm actually going to um, instead add Oxford keep me a bit wider there and there we go arriving in the air traffic zone for Oxford so this isn't a VFR course of course there's lots of different things you can see some danger areas um, but I I happen to have the charts to show me that those will be beneath uh, my altitude on this flight. Um, but there you go. So there is a rough setup and uh, that should load straight into the GPS for me just to have as a backup. Here we are then back in the 320 Simpilot Aviation Academy livery, quite appropriate for heading up to Oxford Kidlington where one of the, uh, the largest flight training organisations uh, is. So we are going to uh, power up very shortly and get ourselves out of Blackbush. This livery created by Paddy and the link will be in the description for anyone who would like to go and pick it up on flightsim.to. But yeah, I'm a big fan of it. Um, as you can see, the disclaimer is written on the tail, not for any real world use, <laughs> which is great. So Blackbush scenery we did look at uh, the other day as we flew in here. So we'll get another chance to enjoy it on the way out. We'll use the one way taxi system to head off to the left over there. Um, and actually, we may even depart from this runway here, which would be a little bit more convenient. So there we go. Let's jump in and have a look at a few of the fixes that have been added into the arrow at the, uh, in the meantime. Something I am particularly excited about is the addition of checklists. So now we can go through the checklist uh, here and it uh, has been all added in, which is really nice. I think the built-in checklist feature of the Microsoft Flight Simulator is a great idea. Uh, so as you can see, parking brake is set, which uh, it is. I'm going to get rid of the yoke just because it makes my life a bit easier. Uh, and then we'll run through the rest of this and then uh, I'll see you when we are ready to power up. But as you can see, it takes you through everything you need. Propeller, we need to shout for it to be clear, and then we can start the ignition. So let's do that. Open up the window. Clear prop. Got to be a little bit careful with airspace around here. The TMA above us is at 3,500 feet. We can see that we're, we're in this ATZ. This ATZ goes up to 2,300 feet. So we're in the controlled area of Blackbird while we're in here. So we're going to go up to 2,000 feet initially. Then I'll get out and I'll climb up to uh, 3,000 feet for the rest of the flight, which should keep us clear of the uh, these restricted areas that we're going to pass beneath us. So off we go. That's brakes released. We're going to depart from runway 25, which is just over here. Okay, so uh, here we are now on the runway, ready to go. We've done our power checks, full mixture, full RPM, fuel pumps are on, lights are on, pitot heaters on, all of those good things. We're going to take off straight ahead to 2,000 feet and then uh, make our right turn, eventually climb into 3,000 feet. Transponders on, we'd have spoken to Blackbush Ground, of course. Let's get another way. Climbing at 80 knots, uh, rotating at 65 on this takeoff, and then we do a quick squeeze of the brakes and up we go. Uh, 90 knots is the best rate of climb once we are underway. So. Holding on the brakes. There we go. Full RPM. Fantastic noise. I love the twitching of the airplane. Brakes released. And away we go. Now they've also smoothed out the airspeed indicator, I believe. There were some issues with it before. And there's 65 knots. Get it into the air. 
Okay, positive climb. Let's squeeze those brakes and get the gear up. There's 80 knots, so we'll climb away initially at 80 knots. We're using just uh, flaps 1 for our departure today. Right, let's get those flaps up now. And we're going to head over to the Compton uh, VOR. So that is all tuned. We would have to identify it as well. So you'd listen out to the audio uh, to make sure you have heard it properly. And let's bring our heading back around on a bit of an intercept. Coming up to 2,000 feet. There's a level off. So to level off, we go attitude and hold it there just to get us level. Get the attitude down. So there we are at 2,000 feet. Keep it there. Then bring the power to cruise power, which is about 23 and 22 so that's 23 inches of pressure on the manifold 2200 rpm that's a bit much there and then we trim now that's not very accurate flying at all <laughs> but there you go um so sky demon is warning about all the airspace around which is good news so let's get back down we're outside the airspace now actually so we can climb a bit more up towards our um 3000 feet Okay, we're now out of the circuit. Let's get that window closed and latched, so that could be getting a bit noisy. We're going to turn off the um, fuel pump. Don't need that anymore. Uh, actually, I'm going to turn off the automatic fuel. I quite like doing that myself. Auto fuel selector. Let's have it ourselves. So we'll we'll swap it over when we need to. Um, and we are on our way. Three thousand feet. As we pass Compton now, uh, I want to know where I'm going next. So my next track is going to be 311, which will take me up towards Oxford itself. And that is quite a nice visual point to uh, to fly over and see what, uh, what so, so we can see where we're going. So what I'm going to do is bring that course bar around and to a track, sorry, track of 356, not 311, 356. Very easy to get muddled up in general aviation. You've got to be very careful here. Uh, and then what we can do is I can simply track that away from the VOR. We'd also have visual cues that you'd be using outside to, to make sure you know where you're going. So here's Compton. Let's make our right turn now. And that's the radial I want to track out of uh, Oxford. Now we're a bit more free now we're out here. As we cross over this line, uh, the airspace above us is uh, less of an issue. It's now at 5,500 feet, so we I'm not so worried about... Uh, the, uh, the, the being at 3,000 feet anymore. There's no airspace directly above us. Well, there is, but it's a bit a bit further away. Um, some other fixes. The whiskey compass now uh, previously was pointing the wrong way, and a few other animation problems with it. But it seems to be sorted out now, which is great news. So we are now going to pass over uh, a few different towns. This is going to be Didcot. Underneath us here, quite a big industrial area at Didcot, as you can see. Okay, I'm excited to see Oxford. As I said, this is the new Pilot Plus Oxford, which is uh, available from uh, on Orbex Direct. It is uh, somewhere that I'm really excited to see. We've, we've been there already on the channel in a uh, live stream, so it'll be good to compare with the, uh, the default scenery that we had before. So as we arrive at Kidlington Airport, we're going to land on runway 19. The circuit is to the left like this. Got to be very careful with the Bryce Norton traffic uh, zone in front of us, so we make sure we don't go wide out of that circuit. No reason to do that. Not too much built-up stuff around. There is a little village nearby, um, but the other thing is it's done at 1,500 feet Q&H. 1,500 feet Q&H. So uh, that is um, quite easy. That means 1,500 feet on our altimeter here. So we'll descend to 1,500 feet as we join the circuit, and we're going to join on the downwind leg. Uh, if you were to speak to a traffic control, uh, they would tell you whether there are other people in the circuit or not. We'll take it that there are none today. This is Oxford in front of us now. We are almost there. Fantastic. Is it time to change the fuel tank? I suppose it probably is. Yeah, look, you can see it's gone down a bit on the left, so let's move to the right tank. Before we do that, we'll turn the fuel pump on, swap over the uh, fuel to the right tank, and then we'll leave the fuel pump on for a little bit there uh, whilst we let that happen. We have to be able to glide clear, so when we reach Oxford, it's important that, uh, although I'm using it as a visual point to navigate by, we must be able to still make it to a field nearby, which will be quite easy today. Should stay on the right of railway lines and roads, if I remember correctly. Uh, the reason is pilot will be in the left-hand seat, so I can keep the road out the left-hand side. And then pilots coming the other way will do the same, and that way they'll uh, they'll be able to, you know, we won't <laughs> run into each other, hopefully. Um, so coming up to Oxford now, 
um, from Oxford, I wanted to head straight to the airfield and that would involve a uh, track from Oxford of about 336. Bit of a change of plan, what I'm going to do is an overhead join into Oxford. So we're landing on runway 19, so I'm going to fly over the numbers there at a, a bit above circuit altitude. So I'm going to go for 2,000 feet, the circuit is at uh, 1,500 feet, and then I can turn over the runway and join down, or join crosswind. Uh, so I'll explain that to you guys as we go, it's pretty similar to what we did at Blackbush. Just because I've uh, come storming into the circuit way too quickly. So let's get that back. Let's get the RPM up. Fuel pump is on. Peter Heater's on. Landing lights are on. We want to be very visible. Here's 2,000 feet. So we'll level off here. I'll keep it about 100 knots. I think that seems sensible. Get that power on. So we're going to fly over the numbers here. 1, 9. Dead side descent to 1,500 feet. Fly crosswind here. And then we can fly downwind and uh, arrive at Oxford. So first view now of the... Pilot Plus Oxford and I can already see big improvements to the hangar and the apron. It looks like they've really, really got that sorted out. So there's the terminal, Oxford Aviation Academy, otherwise known as CAE I believe now. It's uh, been through a few different names. And there's the main apron out front where all the flying school aircraft uh, tend to sit. So let's keep our 15 and, uh, 2,000 feet, sorry. Passing over the numbers. There are two runways, but it looks like that shorter one is now just a taxiway. Maintaining 2,000. As I said, you'd be talking to a traffic control at this point. I need a bit more power. Lovely. Even a little radar spinning down there, I can see. Fantastic. Right, here's 2,000 feet. Through the overhead. I'm going to descend down to circuit altitude now. Just give it myself a little bit of room. Don't want to go through the zone. As you can see, our zone is here. And we'll bring it left round now, fly and join the circuit. Again, I cannot get over the scenery and this aeroplane. I think they are just fantastic. I'm really impressed. And by the scenery, I mean the general Microsoft Flight Simulator scenery. Um, but as well, well, we're about to find out about this airport. Oh, that's a bit tight. We don't need to do that too much. So now the circuit is to the left at 1500 feet, so we're going to join crosswind. And the idea is that by doing this on the dead side of the circuit where no one else is, we can have a good lookout and make sure we can see everyone. There are some business jet hangars at Oxford as well. We'll go and taxi in and park on that main apron, of course. So we're now joining crosswind on the circuit at 1500 feet. And let's turn downwind. Really liking these fingerprint reflections on the air, uh, on the window. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Here we are, downwind on the circuit. Lovely day for flying today, as you can see. Absolutely gorgeous. So what I could do, I suppose, I could set up my course for runway 19, just to give me a better idea of where downwind is. There we go. So we are pretty much downwind now. Again, visually flying is tempting for me as an airline pilot, or an IFR pilot, I should say, to keep looking and doing everything on instruments because <laughs> we get so used to doing that. But the fun of this is the fact we don't have to. We can enjoy the view outside. So gear is now down as we head downwind, and we can start slowing down and turning in for our final. First stage of flap coming out. Don't need to go any wider than this, I don't think. We'll get the speed back. Get below 80 knots. We'll get the second stage of flap out. Great thing about having the checklist as well is you can do things like I'm about to, which is <laughs> we do the landing checklist. Trim for 75 knots. They want to find the approach. There you go. It's even got that information in it. So um, that is great news. So let's go for the second stage of flap. As you do that, the airplane will balloon. There's the sun starting to uh, beam out through, which is great. We are a little bit high, so let's go for the final stage of flap. So that's full flap for this one. Get the nose round. And there we are, runway 19. Still a bit high. Trimming for 75 knots, which is what we're about at. Start feeding on that power. We're about to reach our glide slope, I suspect. Pappies are useful for 
a lot of reasons, but you don't want to get too reliant on them as a uh, a VFR pilot, or they could mislead you. Because I'm beginning to think, there we go. <laughs> I don't want to be any uh, any lower than that. And now we're a bit slow, so we've got to trim for the speed and then use the power to adjust our height. So I probably trimmed a little bit slow, so let's trim it forward a bit. Add the power. There's 75, and in we come. Wind is currently giving us a right crosswind of a couple of knots. Wind is basically calm, there's only about three knots in it it seems. A bit slow there, getting that power on. See it's also dipping a little bit low. Just keeping it adjusted. Nice long runway here for what we're doing really. Not too wide either, so hopefully the visual picture pretty normal. Into the flare, idling the power, holding the nose, a little bit of drift from the right, so a little bit of left rudder, and there is our touchdown. That was a bit of a, a bit of a drop. I think I flared a little bit high there. So we're taxiing clear on the runway now. Let's get some fresh air back in and let's run our after landing so flaps are going to come up makes sense okay let's park up here on the main apron i think the center line will be somewhere there hard to say parking light aircraft is a bit of an art form as well and it's the uh Something you can compete with your friends at. I have no idea where we're sitting there. Oh, not bad. We'll take that. <laughs> Parking brake is on. And leave that engine running. Don't sit it at idle. I should have about 1100 RPM or 1200, I think it was. Engine shutting down, and we'll just finish off the checklist. So here we are now parked up with our chocks in on the apron at Oxford Kidlington Airport in our Aviation Academy livery. Quite fitting, as we know, for uh, Oxford Kidlington Airport. So this is made by Pilot Plus and it's available through Orbex and we'll talk about some of the features and we'll take a look at some of the uh, the scenery we've got here. First thing I want to talk about is these aprons. This is pretty accurate, in fact it is accurate, to the, uh, the apron they have out on the front of uh, Oxford Airport. This is where Oxford Aviation Academy or now known as I think it's uh, CAE, um, but this is where the uh, flight school here will park its aircraft and there'll be uh, lots and lots of different uh, general aviation airplanes here um, you can see the numbering has been added in different concrete textures have been added in as well and even the uh, the roadworks and repair so uh, yeah they've been in contact with the um, management of Oxford Airport to make this you'll notice this little black and white uh, sort of uh, road to cross the taxiway here as well because the little fuel trucks can come out to the aircraft over here I believe um, and I think that the icing trucks as well you'll also notice over here we have the entrance to the uh, main building and there's the control tower on top and this building here is the uh, aviation academy itself but you'll see london oxford airport written there nice benches out here all general aviation airports are required to have benches it seems <laughs> absolutely vital to uh, to letting people sit and enjoy and look out you can even see sadly these days but this is the sort of thing we have the uh, security gate to make sure um, the right people are going out to the airplanes then you've got a nice uh, walkway or labeled so yeah they've clearly done a bit of research or i'm imagining a lot of research to get all of these uh, concrete textures and taxiway markings and even the numbers i quite like that seeing the numbers of the stand so uh, yeah you could you could load up yourself and put yourself on the right stand before heading out on your flight some of this traffic as well has been added in um, this is static aircraft so these are quite nice to have obviously a falcon here and a citation over there so yeah very very nice to see that it doesn't just continue um, at the Oxford Aviation Academy if you head round to the side you'll see uh, even the car parks the hangars the maintenance hangars and so on lots of different businesses run out of Oxford but yeah it has all been modeled I believe if we go into here we'll find the sort of the business lounge area which is all very nice there you go there's arrivals uh, so this is where if you come in your citation you can have a bit of a a nicer experience as you uh, you stroll through the business lounge and if you look in here look at that there's even even desks and planning equipment it's all here really really quite impressive there's the departure lounge oh, this is all very nice isn't it look at that very civilized indeed and you can sit and watch your private jet roll up and uh, get ready to whisk you away wherever in the world you fancy traveling 
Yeah, really impressed. Look at that. Even BBC News has been added in. <laughs> I don't often see attention to detail like this inside the buildings. Look at that. We've got a nice coffee machine. Um, yeah, excellent, excellent stuff. I mentioned in my last scenery video that I like having all these little details because it turns it into a little model sort of uh, model village, model railway sort of style thing, which becomes quite nice to, to fly around and it gives it a bit of... Uh, bit of detail and care that goes into it when you have these sorts of scenery so you can see even the London Oxford Airport branded uh, minivan there if you go onto Google um, Earth you'll be able to look at the satellite view and you'll see that these taxiways are all um, or these walkways and so on are all completely accurate even the change in the tarmac coloring uh, as you head up there is is what you'll see if you go into uh, to the satellite view which is quite something so here's the car park over here we have another flight school so this is pilot flight training not the commercial training organization well i don't know if it is commercial or not but this is um not the same as the aviation academy but this is a private pilot's license there you go trial lessons ground training the more classic vfr style of uh, flight training so that's all been added in which is great over here you'll see some police helicopters because uh we should find airbus helicopters and here they are look at this detail it is fantastic to see yeah really impressed so you've got the hangars over here and something we're going to have to try out um is uh the night lighting which we'll do we'll do that a little bit later we'll do a bit of a, an overview at night so yeah airbus helicopters here again no taxi um <laughs> yeah, that's to stop helicopters i assume from uh, whizzing around on taxiways and there it is eurocopter and yet company so yeah fantastic over here we have the uh hangars so cae as we said and there's another Airbus hangar, which I uh, I didn't realize was there. And there is the main entrance. And here's Cafe 5150. You'll notice that is the coordinates at La Chute and So there you go, a little cafe there as you enter. And here is the CAE uh, main reception. All modeled, all labeled, all branded. Really impressed with that. <laughs> really quite something. If we go up to the tower, I wonder if we have any sort of uh, controllers in here. Look at that, we can see the desks already. This is really quite good. It's, uh, yeah, fantastic. Look at the detail inside. <laughs> absolute radio. So we must have an absolute radio fan. That is a UK uh, radio station, obviously. Here's a little control screen. Is it uh, is it showing us the right area? I, ooh, I I can't actually tell. I'm not very good at reading air traffic control schemes. Looks like a Starbucks cup. So they haven't found the uh, 320 Simpilot branded sustainable coffee cups that we use on, <laughs> on our A320 Neo these days. And they've even got the Oxford charts, ramp charts out there. That is great, isn't it? And uh, there's a few Pilot Plus uh, sceneries, it looks like, on their website. <laughs> Brilliant fun. Yeah, absolutely love that. Love the detail. I don't know if we can go downstairs or not. That would be a little bit uh, extreme for a scenery, I imagine. No, no, there we go. <laughs> we found the limits of their detail, but uh, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Um, you can look out from here and see the main apron down there. There is our uh, Sim Pilot uh, Academy aircraft parked up. So there we have it on a more typical UK day. The rain even splattering onto the control tower windows. Uh, really nice effect. There's dynamic, uh, I think, dynamic window effects on the, the main terminal as well. So look at that glass. Um, yeah, just fantastic. Really, really captures the, the atmosphere of it. Um, yeah, great detail. I love the weathered effect on the roof as well. Really gives it that sense of being, you know, not a brand new control tower. It certainly isn't that. So now that our apron is uh, is flooded, we've got all the fuel trucks. Again, London Oxford Airport branded. More um, of the uh, private aircraft areas over here. So let's go check out a few of those. Here's our fire station. There's plenty of uh, private aircraft uh, set up or, or business jet aircraft set up over at Oxford. Obviously, it's called London Oxford Airport. It's not very near to London, but it's uh, close enough if you uh, have... Uh, or need access to London or somewhere to put your aeroplane and yeah as you can see all of these hangars have been modeled in lots of different uh, aircraft shown but it all looks very nice um, and you can see that it just things have a different sort of texture to each individual part it doesn't uh, look like a, just a 2d sort of space filler it does feel like it's been modeled as an actual actual object so I'm re really impressed with that I've got to say this is um, a really impressive scenery I'm, I'm quite quite surprised actually at all the detail on these tarmac areas as well absolutely brilliant they are also working with airport management i believe to keep it updated in 2021 as the airport goes through some changes that's my understanding of it so we're back now uh, at our cafe the bar 5150 apologize for the stuttering it's not stuttering on my simulator it just stutters um in the recording because the frame rate is <laughs> running a little bit high um, but there we go so all labeled look at that ca oa parking only <laughs> they've even got that marked um, and this is what really adds to the ga style of this airport um, when you're flying in an airliner you don't see this stuff but when you're flying in general aviation just as you saw as we came in through the overhead of the airport we really got to soak in the uh, 
the the, the detail um, as you come in overhead it just looks com really complete and here's the signpost i wonder if we can see actual signs for the there we go look at that arrivals oxford jet capital air services gamma cafe <laughs> and there's the airbus uh, helicopters area so yeah all here i think there's going to be more car park as we come out here and there we go all modeled i'm genuinely really impressed you can see the uh, the tarmac and the the different textures on the ground as well which i noticed as soon as we landed the runway looked really really quite nice really had that rich um texture to it i wonder at what point we run out of scenery <laughs> they seem to have done everything out to this far and then we seem to there we go this looks more like we're getting into the default default microsoft flight simulator world so yeah, really impressed with Pilot Plus's work here on uh, Oxford Airport. Um, look at that, even that little control, t uh, little radar tower, oh, as we saw uh, on the way over, sitting over there. It's surprising how much detail you could put into what is quite a, a small airport, but they've really, really captured so many uh, aspects of it. So I'm, I'm, yeah, really, really surprised, actually, really impressed, especially with these perfect ground markings. We came here on a stream, as I said, and it just didn't have quite, or didn't have anywhere near this level of um finesse and detail to it so uh, i i've got very very little to say I, I i just wanted to show you guys really this is orbex kindly um sent this over and i've just been been sort of exploring it a little bit with you but uh yeah absolutely brilliant so looking at uh google earth at the same time and i can see that this is exactly what the uh the, the markings look like it's really impressive this little cross here meaning we cannot taxi over there that is not a usable taxi anymore here's someone taking off i'm not sure if this is uh AI or I think it's someone flying which is great there they go struggling <laughs> struggling with the sensitivity of the uh the <laughs> Microsoft Flight Simulator's rudder I've done exactly the same thing in this sim but there we go safely in the air excellent <laughs> so what else have we got around the airport as they depart uh, on their lovely VFR flight no doubt we've got the correct ground markings over here as well so you can see the stop markers runway ahead and so on which is nice to have over here is where the aircraft will uh do their power checks when departing from the runway 19. As I said, there's a little grass area on the other side used, um, I believe, for departures in that direction. At some point, this was a cross runway, but uh, it doesn't look like it's set up for that anymore at all, <laughs> which is why you've got this nice wide taxiway running along here. Uh, because, yeah, at one point, this, this was a runway. I'm not sure if they still use it as one ever. So the next thing to check out, we've seen a bit of the rain. We've seen a bit of the uh, uh, the the extra models and the detailing in the car park let's have a look at night and there we go night time the magic of microsoft flight simulator the pappies did seem to work nicely on the approach which is good although obviously those are a daylight thing as well we've got the nice flashing beacons which makes it a really reassuring place to arrive into any pilot will tell you that when you have uh, flashing lights on the approach uh, whether it's this sort or the running rabbits that lead into the final it makes you feel like you're in a very big international airport it's always quite nice to have <laughs> sorry again about uh, any any stuttering you guys can see so over here we have the taxiways which are all lit oxford can be used at night for uh general aviation which like blackbush slightly rare but uh, nice to have we've got the green taxiway lights over here don't seem to run all the way up to the runway which is possibly because this used to be a runway so it wouldn't have the green lights installed in the tarmac um so you wouldn't have green centerline lights on a runway so that might explain why they stop there don't know just guessing there over here we'll head over to the terminal it looks already pretty promising here we are then, exactly as hoped, we have lit up terminal rooms. Really happy to see that. And look at this, even the, the lighting in the club lounge is a little bit softer, a little bit more relaxing for, for that sort of uh, passenger <laughs> with even the, the blue sort of lights. Yeah, this feels premium. Really, really um, impressed with the, the lighting detail. This is, again, something that Microsoft Flight Simulator gives us on a level that I've not seen before. Uh, really, really happy. You've got the lit up terminal buildings, you've got the floodlights, you'll see these spotlights floating. I think this is still a bug left over um, in Microsoft Flight Simulator because I've seen that you know, in lots of places. So I'm hoping that gets sorted over at the terminal now. And as you can see, all lit up very nicely. Uh, you've got the lights out the front as well as the classroom windows all lit up, which is great. Taxiways, lit taxiway signs. I don't know what to say, really. The, this is just um, really impressive let's go into the tower let's see if they've added any extra details at night for that oh look even the exit light is uh, lit <laughs> oh nice uh, blue lighting i wonder if that's something they've installed in the tower that's pretty fancy looks nicer than my uh, gaming area really nice <laughs> and the screens are all lit up as well and producing light fantastic look at that really really impressed so what else is there to say really that is an overview of the pilot plus uh, london oxford kiddington airport or whatever name you choose to use for it uh, available on orbex direct um 
recently released and I, i've got to say I'm, I'm really quite uh quite impressed with it now of course this is going to be most useful for people who actually use this airport regularly in flight simulator or maybe have been to uh, oxford airport as part of their flight training but it is uh, really, really nicely done. It, it's been uh, great fun to actually go through it and see all the little details. And as we said, having the tarmac, the lighting and everything like that sorted away so nicely is uh, really nice. Really a nice little diorama of this airport to have in your, your flight simulator. So that's all for today's video. I hope it's been a bit of fun for you. Another VFR video. Uh, people seem to enjoy the last one, so I thought we'd go and explore another VFR airport. And uh, yeah, let me know what you thought in the comments. Plenty more A320 videos and live streams to come again soon. Thank you all for those who popped along to the uh, long haul live stream as we celebrated 40,000 subscribers. More videos and streams to come very soon. So if you would like to see those, do please like and subscribe. That is always very much appreciated. And we will see you again in another video very soon. Bye bye.